We'd love to talk a little bit today about the concept of designing for components that plays very well into MyTech's design, make, build idea and takes advantage of offsite construction. To do that, myself is Mark James. I'm the Vice President of Sales at MyTech. And I'm Steve McFall, Director of uh, Building Methods. Before we get started, Steve, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the issues that builders are seeing these days in the U.S., and that will help us identify how designing for components can help. Yep. So we, uh, we have a few issues that are up on the screen. As you guys are probably well aware, those are things that often we hear from the industry, some challenges that they're dealing with on a, on a regular basis. Is there anything else that people would throw up there that is not on the screen that they hear about? What do you say, Lee? Do you see something that's, uh, that, it, it, any, any, any additional information? I mean, a biggie right now, of course, is the cost of goods are very, very high right now. There are some goods that are also very difficult to even obtain. So overcoming that to manage the cost of the house uh, has been a big problem or a big thing, managing that. And plus, with interest rates as high as they are, the barrier of entry to like a first-time home buyer is very, very high right now. Yep. So that, that's, a, that's a major problem. It is, and, and, and as we've seen, and, and Tim, you might be able to comment on this, as the uh, complexity of buildings increases based on regulatory requirements and things from a sustainability, carbon footprint, all those elements that are coming into construction, housing, and, and other forms of it, that adds complexity. And when you have complexity, you have to worry about how those systems interact with each other uh, right. as part of the, the early on process of design. Right, absolutely, right? The, ch the needs are changing of the homeowner right now, right? An open concept has always been very popular, uh, but there's a lot of people working from home now. So there's an emphasis on home offices and a separation of space versus a combination of space like maybe a few years ago. Correct, yep, yep. Um, can you say something about the enterprise cost and the interest rate? On the, on the cost and, and the other one? I just didn't hear you. Uh, the barrier of the entry? Barrier of entry. Yeah, so barrier of entry, you know, a lot of times is tied back to, to cost from an affordability standpoint. And it's, it's how do people actually, uh, how are they able to actually getting the housing that they need? You know, shelter, primary need. Everybody needs a form of shelter. And sometimes there's some barriers right now that exist based on historical methods. And it's a case of, in this particular session, how do, you know, components, how does designing that product up front knowing what components you're maybe trying to take advantage of downstream, how does that help you with lowering that barrier of entry? So, right, right. okay. Yeah, cool. Okay, as, as part of this, you know, uh, when we're going through and, and outlining uh, designing for components, so not designing components, that's, you know, Stephen Keller would be your guy on designing components if you mm -hmm. wanna have more on, on that. This is really about that initial product development stage what are some of the things that you should keep in mind as you're going through and, and developing it? The first one that, that's there is goal-centric uh, development. What does that mean, right? There's different things. Lee, right, you understand it's a case of there's, there's cost considerations that should come in. There's schedule considerations that should come in. There's performance considerations that should come in. Not all of those can be the top priority, right? So for a project, it's understanding what is success that's actually going to look like on this project when it gets completed. How is the prioritization of those goals outlined as part of that design process so you know, well, what components are actually going to help achieve those goals that, that may exist? Does that make sense, Michael? you agree with that? So, okay. I think that's perfect, Stephen, because that lays into how the job site is going to look, taking that into consideration, having a plan for getting materials to the job site, having a plan for... Uh, what your needs are. Maybe the topography is in a situation where you can't store a lot of lumber. Maybe you're in a situation where you're going to use some larger advanced components and need a crane. All those things need to be taken into consideration at that design phase in order to make this successful all the way through. Yeah, so it's really starting to, to stretch those bounds on, as you know, those of you that have attended other MyTech sessions throughout the, the week so far, it's really that design, make, build concept how is that actually being applied across your project? And this is really, what do you need to take into account up front uh, as part of that design? So. Right, absolutely. And when you do that, and you're more collaborative with perhaps the homeowner, perhaps your lumber supplier and your component manufacturer, you can start to lay in some components or advanced components to take advantage fully of the design, make, build process and offsite construction. Yep. 
And so be thinking about that, right? At some point, there are going to be people out on site that are going to have to go through and actually execute this design. They're actually going to have to build it, right, in that case. What is the documentation they need in order to be successful at their role in the overall project? It, it can be different based on the type of component that's going to be used and how as part of that initial product development and even that construction documentation, what are some of the things that have to come into the mix in order to make them successful on site? So, okay. Absolutely. And, you know, so components that we've been mentioning today are a very, very integral part of this process. A lot of builders and framers have been using roof trusses around the country and world for years. Uh, wall panels are definitely another example. Uh, we've seen those with great success in the upper Midwest and especially, particularly in areas that have um, a, a smaller build season due to weather. Uh, but there's floor trusses are listed up here and that's something that I don't feel like builders and framers are taking as much advantage of as they could be nationwide. Uh, they offer a lot of advantages like longer spans uh, and even something like this right here uh, on our fantastic display of a garage door header that we were able to remove the LVL piece and add a plated floor truss in its place. This is going to help us manage the supply chain just a little bit better and be a little more in control of our own destiny since your favorite component manufacturer can build that to your specification. Yep, no, it's, it's perfect and it's, it's one of those things that, you know, these are just examples of components and a lot of times when you, you know, people might say components or they might say offsite out in the industry, that can have a very wide definition, right? So it's like, and we, we, we aren't going to talk about this part of the session, but it's like if you're even going down the, you know, volumetric modular route, that's something that is very critical to have identified at the very early stages of a project because that's going to completely change how you would design it, knowing that is the, the solution that you're going to use downstream. So, and as you know, Mark, Mark said, it's like all of these component types that are, that are here and, and kind of more what's represented in here have different considerations that have to be taken into account. So. Right. So as we talked about some of the issues that builders are seeing initially, one of them certainly is time, right? Getting the building up as quickly as they possibly can. It may not be for all jobs, but for many, especially um, uh, track builders, time is a big aspect. So that last one uh, that we have on there is uh, floor cassettes. And Stephen, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of floor cassettes before, but if you haven't, there's an example of one uh, in our booth here at the IBS show 2023, and it adds a little bit more of a layer of complexity on the job side because they're big, they need to be shipped kind of all at once, and you do need a crane to put them in place. However, in a single, and especially a multifamily or multi-dwelling project, you can get that floor system set very, very quickly. I mean, in a single family, we're talking maybe a half an hour for the entire first floor to be set, and you're ready to start framing walls. Another aspect, Stephen, is safety, right? <laughs> For those framers out there in the audience that, f that follow the BCSI guide for proper truss bracing, it's kind of complicated to do that before you can safely have a framer tie off on that system. Where a floor cassette over there, if you'll notice, there actually already is a safety harness attached to the cassette. Yep. So once that's set in place, the framer can safely click off and move forward with the next panel. And that's even a case to think about uh, sometimes from a, a large multifamily project where you might be required to come back in and install a safety railing before they even start working on the second floor walls, right? So it's like maybe just getting the floors completed, they actually have to spend time going around maybe setting up a safety railing, where if you can cut down the amount of time it takes to do that floor, they now are able to jump in and start building the walls, possibly cut that expense entirely out of the project. Okay? Absolutely. And just on that example, you know, it's, Michael, it's like what do you think the, the average on-site man hour savings percentage-wise would be when using floor cassettes versus stick framing? What do you think that percent of savings would be? 40 percent. Any higher or lower? Anyone want to go higher or lower than that, Lee? What do you think? 40 percent. So with floor cassettes, we actually see it's about 75 percent, mm -hmm. right? And so when you think about that's a that's a big amount of uh, you know time from a man hours perspective that can be cut off the job. Mm -hmm. Still time that's required to build them, but it's just done in a different environment, and therefore you're able to reduce what happens on site. So, okay. Absolutely. I think as part of the next thing, we're going to turn this into a little bit of a quiz or a little bit of a you know session that we're going to play some some games with folks, mm -hmm. and we're going to say, okay, we've got a series of images that are shown up here. What is it that the audience actually sees as things from the design standpoint that would need to be taken into account 
based on the components that are being used. Okay, so don't be shy and go ahead and, and throw something out there if you see something in one of the pictures. See, while everyone's thinking, I'm going to throw everybody a softball here on this first photograph. This is a great picture of a relatively tight job site. Foundations poured. Yep. And we have wall panels and floor trusses sort of staged on the job site, right? That is a massive advantage to using components because these can not only be uh, built and delivered and placed in a very specific location on the job site to help that framer even more so to put that building together. Yep, that's a great example. Has anybody seen anything else that, that sticks out in, in any of the pictures? Rachel? Which one? The, the people, right? right? And it's a case of, yeah, how many people might even be needed on site. How are those people going to work? So if you look at that, that second image that's, that's down below the, the one that Mark was just speaking to, there's a case there where these are components that are being used. They take up space. How are you going through and making sure that, you know, design logistically, we know where we're going to place certain wall panel bundles in order for the crew to actually be able to break them apart and actually go about executing the work that they need to do. So that's something that as you're working through the design of the project up front, be thinking, do we have enough square footage to actually allow these bundles to be dropped in? Is there anything that would prevent us from saying doing a, you know, a 15 or a 16 foot panel versus we need to stay at eight foot? You know, those are, those are things to, to take into account as part of the, the design. So. Steve, did you know that the MyTech structure software allows the designer of the project to not only specify what panels are in each stack, but they can also specify where the best place to put that stack on the job site is to even help the framers yet even more. That's a, you know, I actually did know that, Mark, but it is a very good point to, uh, to cool. remind yeah. everybody That's about. So. That's okay. All right, what else, guys? What, this is a rendering from our software. What does everybody see there? Anything, anything crazy? Mechanicals. Michael says mechanicals, and that's mm -hmm. that's a case, right? So when we when we talk about a systems approach to design, that's not just what do we need to consider as part of our framing system, or what does the HVAC system need to look like? Both of those actually have a lot of overlap and interaction with each other, and so that's that case about when we're going through the initial product development, what is the system or the component type we might be using downstream? Because we might be able to change how we route HVAC systems through the the framing because of the certain component type that was specified or selected up front, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of those details, you know, that having a supply run that is right near the end of that, in that case, a truss, that's not something that all types of framing would allow to have take place. But if that's a requirement of the project, that helps you decide, well, what component is really gonna be the best fit for that? Mm -hmm. All back to the initial design that's going in on the project. So. And there's one more, Steve, on this particular screenshot that I love. Again, if time is of the essence on the job site, or if perhaps saving a little bit of money on hardware is of the essence, knowing that these are trusses, we have the ability to switch them to a top cord bearing truss and lay that right on the wall for the connection, rather than using a big bucket hanger, uh, which, as we know, needs to be engineered, that needs to be put in place, that often needs five or six or sometimes 10 or 11 screws or nails to make sure they're in the right spot, where this speeds up that insulation and saves the installation of that hanger. Yep, that's a great point. So let's move on, take a look at, a, at another image. What jumps out on this one? And Mark, don't give them any clues. No softballs here. Let's, let's see what, uh, what the group comes up with. Because Tim is studying it hard, so yes. let's... Uh, <laughs> Any comments? This one is a good one. There, there's a number of them that are in there. Maybe a little bit off the uh, off the beaten path that you might see initially. So, there's a door Very in the good. panel. That's right. So right. This, this is one of those things, right? That from a component type, there was a case about saying, "Hey, we'd like to stretch what the advanced component looks like," and in this case, include some windows and doors that are being installed off-site and dropped into it. So, how does that impact the initial design? Well, the specification of that window or door now has to be taken into account because we're going to put it into a panel and drive it down the interstate installed, so that's something that has to be considered. Is this window manufacturer, do they, do they allow, is that something that they will guarantee their, their product to actually perform in? So mm -hmm. that goes back to what window manufacturer might have been specified or what type of window was called out during product development in order to enable that component type to actually happen. Absolutely. In addition to that, knowing that this was clearly a very tight 
build space, right? There's homes on both sides. There's not a whole lot of area to tee up components or lumber. They needed to make sure that there was a crane in place because these are very, very large, very, very heavy wall panels. And, uh, and again, without that plan or without understanding the need of that crane or the needs of these wall panels, you really wouldn't be able to do that. There might be a, a massive change that needed to happen in the field or on the fly. We want to avoid that. Right? Yep. We want to avoid that. Yep. And a couple more just in that image. There's a, there's a lot of a stuff in the data points that are, are showing in that. The one is, again, is, as Mark's talked about logistically, and do you have space on the site for a crane? What size crane is going to be needed? You know, those are things to consider, you know, that might dictate what component type is actually able to be used on the project uh, if you don't have the space for it. The other one is even from a transportation standpoint with the trailer that's in the background, the panels being shipped vertically instead of flat. You know, is that something that's going to be a limitation based on what you'd want to do as part of an advanced panel assembly that you'd like to use? And the last one that I point out is then even with something like the weather barrier that's there. In this case, it's a, it's a house wrap product that's going on there. How does it need to be detailed architecturally in some of the details that exist in order to support the usage of a component um, offsite? You might actually need to go through and detail a little bit differently as part of initial product development in order to make that uh, a, a viable solution uh, on site. Uh, down at the rim board level, it's a yeah, it's a transition product of some type. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what that one might be. So, yeah, good, good question. Yeah, good question. So, <laughs> okay. Anything else from that image? We've got one more to move along to. Last but not least. Last but not least. What do you see, Mark? I see a lot of things. I, th th these top two pictures, I think, are really impressive to me. We talked a little bit about uh, uh, MEP needs, or in this case, plumbing needs. We really have an advantage when using components of knowing not only exactly where each component is, but the location of each web and or vertical and or lateral bracing, which in this case allowed us to do the, literally do the layout for the plumbing for this particular building, verify where maybe the toilet drop is or other drops to ensure that doesn't impede on the floor system and give an illustration to the plumber exactly how those runs needed to be, need to be done. No cutting, no drilling, Everything's great. No change order in the field. No repairs. That's right. No repairs is a is a big key. And additionally, on that, if you look at that that picture down on the on the bottom of the screen, you can see the complexity of all of the systems that are trying to fit into a very tight space. Imagine if someone had to come through and drill a whole bunch of holes in order to get those all installed. So that gets back and saying, okay. We know in this particular um, product that we're developing, just based on the footprint that it is, what we're trying to deliver to the marketplace, this is going to be a very congested area. We're going to have a whole bunch of MEP systems that have to go in there to tightly together. How are we then going to say this is probably the right component type for us to use in order to make that happen? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. And the last one that I'd throw out there to the group is, even if you look at this, the, the picture off on the, on the right, there's a detail in how the decks are framed, and you see some, some joists that are sistered onto the side of the floor trusses. Okay? That could be an opportunity of saying, well, we're going to change our initial detailing on the product development side to actually have those cantilever members actually part of that truss itself. So now we've taken where someone might have to install three different pieces of material, they now have to install one truss, and, that, and those members are actually built into the truss that's there helps on speeding up what happens on site, also cuts down number of penetrations from a weather barrier standpoint that would have to be considered. There's just different detailing elements that that comes in by making that change early on in the product development process. So at the end of the day, Steve, thinking through your build process and being a little bit more collaborative with your supplier partners or perhaps your component manufacturing partner can solidify all of these things. Everyone can be on the same page, usually through software and it can really enhance the design, make, build process and take advantage of these off-site techniques that we just talked about. Yep. So there's a, a lot to consider when you're designing for components to make sure you always get to the best solution uh, for the project. So.